So last week I um, replaced a couple of spokes in this in this wheel, um, and I showed you that well, the bearings were absolutely no good. Um, so this week I'm just going to strip it down, have a look at what's inside, um, what has gone wrong with it, and then see if we can fix it. Um, this hub is. A Campagnolo, if I'm pronouncing that wrong, I'm not sure. But it's a Campi um, Athena hub, uh, for late 90s probably. So it's had some use. There we go, actually. I think the problem is just these lock nuts have come loose. Let me just zoom in. So as I was talking to you then, I just moved these lock nuts and uh, they were there and you can see the wheel, the rim moves around but I just wound them down and it stopped all the rotation so we're going to strip it down anyway I um, <laughs> think I found the problem straight away loose lock nuts but we're going to strip it down and uh, see what's what so normally to do this you just need your cone spanner Find which one fits in there, and then for this one, I'm going to need the second cone spanner. And just unwind it. Top lock nut. couple of washers and this should be a cone nut that looks alright it's going to need a bit of cleaning up but it's not broken or anything um, inside we have we've got loose bearings yeah, we've got loose bearings inside, so I've got to be careful about how to take this off. Um, and we've got this top cap with a, looks like a rubber seal around it. And seeing as it has a hole in it, I guess we can unscrew it somehow. But so what I'm going to do instead is just flip the axle over. Okay, so you've got the uh, axle that comes out with the free hub body. Um, oh, the pulls have fallen off. One of the pulls has fallen off, so I've got to be careful of that. And inside here, we've got another race of bearings. So there's two races just inside that hub. And we're going to have to clean all this out now, clean everything up. So here's something you should take note of. Carefully remove the bearings. Um, we've got nine on the non-drive side and ten on the drive side. Now the ones on the non-drive side are bigger. They look like quarter inch bearings. So it looks like we've got nine quarter inch bearings on the non-drive side and ten seven thirty twos. Um, so I'm going to have to either clean these up or go out and buy some 732s. So I'm just cleaning everything down now. Um, cleaning the axle and free hub assembly. Um, and on this, this free hub, um, you've got the pools which are here. I mean, you can just see them. There's three of them. Uh, and they are on springs they're on springs and if you're very gentle you can take them off uh, so you've got the little dimple in the spring 
which seems to go on the end and then when it's inside when it's all together it will sit inside like so and the spring just pushes it out like that so when it all goes back together I've got to make sure all this stays in place and I don't lose any of this so I'm going to continue stripping that down and cleaning it up and then we'll get back to you ok let's see how this goes um, bottom half is clean underneath uh, but I want to just I mean it spins nicely but there is obviously a bit of dirt and grit that's just gone in the top so I want to see if I can loosen it up um, and clean it out so it lasts a little bit longer so I've just clamped it in the vise on the smooth section of the axle and hopefully oh actually I'm not actually sure <laughs> if the vise is holding the axle there we go Ah, interesting. Okay. Well, that came off regardless, but there is actually a little uh, grub screw, <laughs> which is in the side here, uh, which should line up with the keyhole in the axle. So that obviously wasn't wound in well enough if I managed to remove it. Underneath that we have a little spring washer, another washer, okay so it looks, ah there we go, it's just a press fit. Okay, so what we have on here, which will be easy to clean up right now, um, is the free hub body itself. Um, you've got the axle, but there's uh, actually press fit bearings inside the free hub body, so we can't service those really. So what we can do is just clean everything out and then put some new grease around the axle itself and uh, reassemble it. Okay, so that's all cleaned up now. Uh, just use white spirits, thinners, whichever, just to uh, clean it all up. So I'm going to put some of this Phil Woods Tenacious Oil around it. Um, it says it's uh, ideal for use between contacting services. Um, I think it's quite, it's quite a sticky one. Um, which seems to be what was on there before. So the one bearing surface sits around here. So I'm going to put a bit around there. And then the main sort of shaft sits around here. So I'm going to put a good bit around there. And that will just sit on there, so we can pop the washer back on. There we go. Pop the spring washer back on. And then the lock nut. And I guess we're going to have to get it into a position where we can actually screw this uh, grub screw into the key track. Like that's tight there. So my grub screw is round on the back side, so I'm just going to back it off slightly just till the grub screw goes into the slot. And then there's got no movement in that, 
So if I tighten that grub screw. That in theory should access the lock ring. Yeah, that's it. Cool, that'll hold it in place now. So that's one side, one side serviced. Well, what I've got to do actually is replace these springs from the pools. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, zoom in. Unfortunately, this is the full size. This is the size of two of them that came out. So there's a there's a little bit of a difference there. Um, it seems that they have just worn and just broke. Um, so I'm going to try and find some replacements for those because I don't want the performance of the pools to be affected. Uh, so that's kind of what I can do now. So the next clip will be once I have those pools. Okay, new bearing sign. Um, had to order some because I didn't have the 732s that I needed. 730 seconds. Um, so I had to order some new ones in. I uh, got them here. Got a little baggy with them in. Got a quarter inch. So we needed 10. 732s in this side and uh, nine quarter inch in the other side. It's all cleaned out. I've just cleaned it out with thinners. Um, let it dry and make sure all the old grease is out there. So I'm just going to put a bit of the new grease in once I've got these new bearings out of the packet. So I'm just using some weld tight TF2 um, grease, red grease, it's got some Teflon in there as well. So that's just going to go into here. And I'll be able to show you after, but there's a little, uh, it's not like a solid seal on there, so it's just got a little flap. Got to try and keep all the grease in inside where the bearings go because I don't want it to be inter interfering with the um, the pulls and gum everything up. So I've got to get ten in there without dropping them through. One. Two, three, ten. Easy as that. And um, that is what it looks like on the inside. Let's just check you can see that on the camera. So you can see the new bearings in there. The clean sort of, uh, what do you call them, ratchet mechanism for the pools and uh, the rubber seal that is keeping out the uh, thick grease because I don't want these pools to come up so try and keep that clean so now just flip the, uh, bit, flip the hub over and install the quarter inch in the other side again just cleaned out, thinners, brake cleaner, whichever you've got just make sure it's all clean in there. Check for any corrosion spots. Because uh, obviously any corrosion spots are going to have an effect on the bearings and make them run rough. No grit in there. Put the fresh grease in. Put the nine quarter inch bearings in. And Bob's your mother's brother. So where I left off last time, 
Um, this was all clean, blah blah blah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I needed some springs, so eBay sorted it out. Had to get some measurements, uh, as you'd expect. But here we go. Don't lose them; they're all stuck. That is the old spring. It is a compression spring. Uh, it was around 12 mil long, 3.9 mil in diameter, with a 0.31 mil wire. And I've just dropped one. Oh, you are kidding me! <laughs> I found it. I can see it. I can see it. And these are the new ones. Uh, they're a bit longer, so I'm gonna have to trim them down first, um, and then we can uh, get to installing them. Springs cut. I'm just gonna put a bit of the uh, fill woods, so so it's a little sticky, just in the hole there, and just in the edge here on each side because I don't want these uh, I don't want these to wear out so uh, I'm just going to put a drop in the hole on the pool as well and then we'll see if the new spring fits And stick it in the end. That fits. And then that's going to sit in there. And that should work. Looks like it has good tension on it. But it's not going to sit in there by itself. So. Now this is going to be the awkward part. I've somehow. Somehow. Gotta get these pools to stay in place and drop the hub over the top at the same time, holding it all in place. Don't know how this is gonna work. Um, sometimes you've just got to experiment with these things. So I need to try and hold these in place. Remember, these are all greased up. They're all going in like that. Lower this wheel over the top. Oh, it's popped out already. that go in? Okay, I've kind of got them trapped at the moment. So I should be able to just work them in now from underneath. Does that work? Final part, just winding these series of washers, comb washers, lock nuts back on. So you want to get down where there's no play in the hub. But the bearings spin freely. Now the hub came with these washers which are very nice. Uh, they're kind of deformed and they're not going to go over properly. And there should be around about a 5mm clearance between the end of the axle and this top lock nut. Um, this lock nut has a serrated surface on so that it grips the frame. Um, and obviously we've got a gap underneath where these two washers, actually maybe plus a bit more, Nah, about the thickness of these two washers will go, but I want to see if I've just got any others 
because uh, these are kind of well horrible looking so I found the um, just a different washer just to put in there got the spacing right and then you just need to get your uh, cone spanners again and just lock it off but we're going to test the axle to see how well it spins it's best to do this in your hands but then it spins freely ratchets quite well and outside the vise now you can that is too tight I can feel the bearings so that's too tight where it is just loosen the cone nut a little bit much better you can feel everything through your fingers through your hands you'll be able to if the bearings are too tight and they're catching you'll be able to feel it and it spins a lot better now And there we go, one <laughs> rebuilt Campagnolo uh, Athena hub. It should fit an 8 speed cassette now, I believe. I don't know about 9 or 10 speed. Well, no, 10 speed, 8, 9, and 10. Um, but yeah, I've got this nice wheel now. I don't know if I've got any use for it, but it was a fairly simple fix. Serviced the hub today, did the spokes last week. It's good to use again. But I hope this little video was useful. Um, if you're doing a hub service of your own, um, the only really tricky part is getting those pulls, the springs to stay in place while you drop it in. Um, that was tricky. The rest of it's um, just a fairly simple strip down, clean, replace bearings, replace grease. And you've got a, uh, a nice hub that spins freely again. Yeah, that will last for thousands more miles now. So, thanks for watching. Subscribe for more. Hit down in the comments what you liked, what you didn't like and all that. Um, and I will see you in the next video.